the way we build our buildings is stupid. <laughs> we mine valuable resources out of the earth. We schlep them on fossil fuel-based ships all over the planet. And when they arrive on the site, they have to be put together by hand. Every building is a bespoke prototype. Every building is a one-off. And we've been doing it this way for 200 years. And our buildings are failing us. They don't work. I'll show you what I mean. This is a building in 1917, and this is today. <laughs> it's the exact same technology. I would show you one from 1817, but cameras hadn't been invented yet. Do you see what I'm saying? You could essentially resurrect a zombie from the Civil War, put him on a job site, and he'd go right to work. And that's convenient. <laughs> but we've learned so much in the last 200 years. They didn't know then what we now know about cancer or endocrine disruption or indoor air quality. So as John Oliver would say, how is this still a thing? <laughs> Not to mention the fact of how buildings are the largest contributors to climate change. By the way, I don't even call it climate change anymore. It's too pleasant. I just call it chlamydia. Because <laughs> nobody, nobody wants that. So how do we fix this? <laughs> buildings require massive resources, massive energy. If the building's too hot, you put in energy. If it's too cold, you put in energy. And our buildings are killing us, by the way. They're making us all sick. So we need regenerative, healthful, abundant buildings. So pick your market failure, whatever you want. Labor, waste, materials, climate, it doesn't matter. It's failing on every level. Not to mention the fact that nobody likes us. I don't know if you, just Google contractors and architects, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> they hate us. Come on now, everybody in this room probably has a contractor story. <laughs> by the way, you can learn a lot by Googling things. I didn't know that you could accidentally kill your sister. I didn't know that was a, <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. The role of sustainability is to give us a brighter future. And frankly, I'm trying to give us a future of Star Trek and not Mad Max. That's the future that I'm going for. And then, thank you, Mom. And then... <laughs> And what's interesting is it's more than just buildings. Do you realize that after we banned lead paint in buildings, the crime rate went down? So it's tied to something much bigger because this is not Photoshop. This is us designing buildings, pretending it's wintertime and we'll never need air conditioning. It's incredibly short-sighted. And the current state of green building alone is not going to cut it. So building Barbie's Net Zero Energy Dream House <laughs> is nice, but it's not enough. We need a disruption. We need a paradigm shift. We need a transformation. And it's got to come from outside. It won't come from within. No candle manufacturer invented a light bulb, right? The post office did not invent email. If you want a transformation, <laughs> it's got to come from outside. Now, I used to work for students of Frank Lloyd Wright, and Mr. Wright used to describe what he called organic architecture. He even used biological terms to describe what we would do that a building would grow from its site, that it would respond to its surroundings. And for 25 years, I built buildings like this that I called healthy buildings. But they're not healthy buildings. So what do I really want here? Life! Life, do you hear me? Give my creation life! That's what I want, life. Real life, that's what we need. We know that certain buildings are going to continue to progress the way they are. We know building materials will continue to get more and more transparent in their materials. They'll continue to be less and less toxic, less and less bad. But they'll never be good for you. And they'll continue to get better and better sourced. What we're doing is we're building these living walls. I've done a lot of these. They're beautiful, right? This is a living roof. It's nature, but on top of dead, toxic material. It's missing the opportunity. What if instead our buildings were actually alive? What if they breathed? What if they could grow? What if they could heal? Within construction, there's this small subset called green building, right? And there's an opportunity that's about to pass us by unless we seize on it. An opportunity across DNA and biology that if we tap into it could transform how we build our buildings. And that's my big idea. And I call it, frankly, prostruction. Prostruction is the opposite of construction, right? It's building the way nature does, using nature's technology. Are you like that? 
And I know it sounds science fiction, but it's actually possible. And there are architects working today to make this a reality. If you look at the trends, you can see what I'm talking about. Forever, we've had low-emitting materials. Then we had zero VOC-type materials. You can get those at Lowe's if you like, right? Then we had agricultural waste-based products. They're very pretty. And then now there's an explosion in bio-based materials. Right now, it's a $65 billion market. It's about to be at $500 billion in the next 10 years. And if you see how the trends stack up, you can see that living materials are almost inevitable. What's driving all this is for the first time in human history, we now know why a zebra gets its stripes. We know how a leaf heals itself. We know why the firefly glows. And all of making it possible is DNA. That for the first time ever, human beings can easily catalog, replicate, and replace DNA. And the cost of which just keeps going down. If you go to MIT's Synthetic Biology website, growing a house is on their to-do list. So we've been talking about this for 20 years. So I went to MIT, and I met with their head of synthetic biology, Professor Ron Weiss. Lovely guy. This is his office. By the way, here's, here's how smart he is. That's his lunch order. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, he's on, a, <laughs> he's on a whole other level than you and me. And I said to him, how would I grow a building? I said, what if I wanted the walls to absorb chemicals? He said, oh, that's easy. I said, what if I wanted it to glow? He said, oh, that's easy. I said, what if I wanted to heal itself? Easy. I started to get very uneasy by his use of the word. It's not a very scientific term, easy. And I said, why is it so easy? And he said, we already know how nature does this. We drag and drop them like software packages. It's easy. I said, okay, if it's so easy, what's hard? And he said, well, buildings are kind of big. And we have trouble growing big things like nature. And we realized that if we start growing buildings and start to really get good at that, it could help him solve his problem with growing organs and other things. I also then asked him, how do we prevent, I don't know, Jurassic Park from happening? How do we keep that from happening? And he just said, well, first of all, your building's not going to chase you through a kitchen. And if it does try to eat you, it'll do it really slowly. <laughs> and I said, is that biology humor? And he said, yes. So there you go. <laughs> the way nature builds things is it creates what's called a scaffold. This is a scaffold. This is coconut husk, right? An apple is mostly scaffold with apple DNA in it. And when I think of scaffold, I think of this, frankly. And that's what it is. It's basically a structure that things grow over. You are a scaffold. You're a skeleton with, uh, you know, paunches of fat on it, right? And um, <laughs> nature has a variety of ways that it builds scaffolding. And it, more importantly, it builds scaffolding at room temperature without heat or pressure or fossil fuels. And the results are incredible what nature can do. A wealth of form and color and geometry and shape. So this is what's possible. And I know you're thinking plant-based, right? That's what most people think. But actually, we expect that whoever does this, it would be a variety of technologies from nature. Plant-based mixed with fungal, mixed with polymers, who knows what. And just one of these innovations could radically transform how we build our buildings. Think about your arm, how it thins out in the middle and thickens at the point of higher stress, all out of material that's four times the strength of concrete, and half the weight, by the way. It's amazing. Construction keeps using CO2 as a waste product. Prostruction uses it as a building block. In construction, we have to layer things over one another, structure and form and lighting and plumbing. In prostruction, everything grows together. We can move away from this idea of mass production into mass customization. Every building could be unique, and instead of painting it every three to five years, the pigment could come from within. You wouldn't need lighting anymore because the whole surface could glow. Every building could be a LEED certified building. Every building could be a living building challenge building. Every surface could be a smoke detector. And if you pull a nail out of the wall, the wall could heal the same way your own skin does. That's what's possible. You could even change the color of the house based on your mood or the time of year. So if it's October, make the walls orange for Halloween. Go nuts. Every surface could absorb chemicals and carbon and transform a lot of other things. And this is very much designed to work with existing buildings. So grow your shell and put in your crappy Ikea cabinets if you want and rip them out in five years. Who cares? <laughs> we could even embed the building code itself into what we grow. So if you grew a stair, it would automatically meet code. You wouldn't need building inspectors anymore. And nobody's going to miss them, believe me. <laughs> Imagine every surface, a sensor, a battery, a heat sink. So let's grow our buildings. We are not the first creatures to grow things on this planet. Lots of creatures grow things. This is the silk hen spider. It builds a fence around its nest to protect its young. 
This is the bagworm moth. It builds a pyramid, which it then eats. It's fantastic. <laughs> and this little beauty, this is the puffer fish. It builds a geometric pattern on the floor to attract a mate to make up for its other shortcomings. It's amazing. <laughs> we suck at building. What are we holding on to here? We're not very good at this. Sometimes it's ridiculous, and sometimes it's catastrophic, but we're not good. <laughs> so let's change this. Let's switch from a paradigm of cut, slash, and burn to grow, regenerate, and breathe. Let's use nature as the ultimate technology. <laughs> to make this possible, I've been working with the XPRIZE Foundation, and we designed an XPRIZE for healthy homes to essentially grow buildings. And if we do this, we're providing an abundant future of healthy buildings for everybody. And that's the real pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> that's redefining the American dream for everybody. <laughs> and frankly, it's inventing a new version of victory for the whole world. Thank you very much. Thank you.